All right, everyone, I'm going to actually try to make the same horizontal lollipop chart using another technique that I learned from Stephanie Evergreen at Evergreen Data. She published a blog post about this uh, a few years ago, and I've always made my lollipop, uh, my vertical lollipop charts like this. It's basically uh, creating a scatter plot, but what I, but I, the difference here is the labels. And you can see that the data labels here for, the, for each of the categories or each of these rating items here is right below the lollipop. You can also put them right above the lollipop. You can see we did this in a different video here. I'm gonna show you just how we might be able to swap those a little bit. So we can swap it here. I'm gonna to try to make uh, the horizontal lollipop chart look just like this. I haven't, try, I haven't created this chart yet, um, and I just hit record, and I think I'm just gonna take you through my process. So please forgive uh, my ums and ahs, and we'll probably push the undo button a few times throughout this video. So stay tuned, and hopefully you get a few laughs out of uh, this process. So I'm gonna go down here. This is how you have to set up your data. Your data will be right here. This is essentially your X data, and then this is your Y data. So it's going to be this dot plot here that I'm going to have, uh, that I'm going to hack here. But then the labels is what I'm not sure if this is going to work. So we're going to see, uh, we're going to see if that works here. You can see each of the labels, the Y, I've made 0.5 higher than the Y for my survey rating, and that's what I want uh, to put the labels on. Usually, I would just put the X labels all the way over on the end of the Y axis so that they would show up at the exact same points of these Y of the Y lines on the scatter plot or the dot plot. But I want to see if I can create one where the labels are just above that line. So we'll see if this works. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm not, I'm not going to highlight any of the source data. I'm just going to go up to insert and insert a totally blank scatter plot. And I'm just going to resize it just a little bit so that we have some room to work. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my survey data. So I'm going to right click, click on edit data. I'm going to add a data series here. I'm going to point that to survey rating. My X data is here. My Y data is going to be here. Once I do this, you should start to see that. So that's a nice little dot plot right there. And let's see, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my labels. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to go here to add. I'm going to add my X labels. The X value is still, I think, going to be zero. And then the Y value is going to be these right here for the labels. All right, so this actually did work. So we're going to see how this could work. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and push OK. Now I have the bones of my labels here. I'm going to actually go ahead and unselect, or I'm going to select the Y axis. And I'm going to get rid of it because we don't need it. I'm going to right click my label dots here and what I'm going to do is let's see I'm going to add data labels to these dots now I want to point to the category names or the rating names I don't want these numbers so I'm going to go over here to bar chart option label options and then I'm going to let's see click uncheck Y value and select the value from cells line and I'm going to point to my category names here and now all of those names should pop up in my labels. Excellent, this is gonna work. So, okay, so now I'm gonna click on those, uh, the dots, the markers. We don't need these dots. So I'm gonna go over here, format data series to the marker tab here, and I'm gonna just se select none. I'm gonna go ahead and format this a little bit, increase the size just a little bit, make it bold. We don't need the vertical lines and you know, I actually don't think we need the axis either. And we may not need these lines either, the grid lines. So what I'm going to act, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start by making my horizontal lollipop. And we have to do that with our error bars. So using a similar technique to what we did in the previous video. So I'm going to go ahead and collect my, select my bars. And, you know, actually the thing that I notice here is that my lowest selected rating is on the top and my highest is selected on the bottom. Now this is probably a preference. The data is still sorted, but I really like to have the most, the highest uh, selected data at the very top. So all I need to do if I want to do this is I need to sort by the Y data. So I'm going to actually select everything here and I'm going to sort by column E so that it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, instead of seven, six, five, four, three. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and then custom sort down here. And it's gonna be by column E. 
right now it's uh, it's actually will default to smallest to largest so that's what I want so I'm gonna go ahead and try that and see if it works and let's see it doesn't look like oh of course that's why because I can't sort everything I just have to I just had to actually not sort this so actually I'm gonna undo and I just need to actually change my Y data here. So I don't even need to sort anything. I just need to type new numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and select 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Perfect. And then I want to do the exact same thing to make sure that my labels match 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, 5.5, 6.5, and 7.5. OK, perfect. Now that's exactly how I want it to look. Now we're going to do. Uh, first, I'm just going to get rid of this borderline. Never have a never put a borderline on your charts. That's one tip I learned from folks like Stephanie Evergreen. All right, so I'm going to get the error bar. So collect, uh, select these dots. Let's make the marker just a little bit bigger. Click on the built-in here, and then let's bump this up to maybe 10 or 12. I'm going to select the fill color and make it the same color blue. That'll be nice. We'll say no line on the marker. All right, while they're still selected, I'm going to go up here to the Chart Design tab, Add Chart Elements, and go to Error Bars. And I'm going to select that Percentage Error Bar. Now it gives me these four different error bars. I want to definitely get rid of the vertical ones. We don't need those, so I'm going to delete those. The horizontal ones, just like the last video, I'm going to go over here to the Format Error Bar menu, click on the bar chart. I'm going to collect, so, uh, select just minus. Uh, no cap, and then under percentage, I'm going to select 100%, enter 100%, and that puts the lollipop all the way down to the base. Now I can get rid of the actual grid lines for the chart, so I'm going to select those and then push backspace for delete, and there is my horizontal lollipop. This is so awesome. So I'm going to go ahead, click those error bars, I'm going to edit those so that they're the same color. Maybe I want to put them up to 0.3 font, 0.3 size, just or uh, 3 point pixels just like the last one. Awesome. And then you can actually still add your data labels here. So right click the dots, add data labels. It's going to give you the Y value by default, but over here on that bar chart icon, just go ahead and unselect Y and then select X value. And then there is your horizontal lollipop. Perfect for putting into your slide or report. I'm just going to edit that text a little bit. So Horizontal lollipop, two different ways to do it. You can um, mix and match, but once you learn these techniques, you can figure out other ways that you might even want to learn them too. One thing that I'm noticing is that my labels are just a little bit up here. I wonder if I, if I kind of work with the label position. I'm going to go ahead in the plot area, move this over just a little bit. If I were to select center on the data label position, not sure what would happen here, so let's just check that. Uh, it makes everything centered. Definitely don't like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on right again. One thing we might be able to do is go up here to the size, the label size icon, and I wonder if we can play with the right margin to maybe push the labels over a little bit to the left. So I'm going to bump the right margin up a little bit. Doesn't really do anything there. Probably left left won't do anything. I wonder, that might just be a limitation of this chart type. I guess what I could do is I could, right now the labels are set to zero. I could actually select, uh, make, the, make the labels maybe like negative, I don't know, negative 0 0.0, let's see, negative 0.9. What would that do? Ooh, that goes, that's like way off. So like negative 0.0, one there. Maybe that works. It's like negative 0.05. Let's try that. It's a little bit, see a lot of this is kind of trial and error. So let's try 0.3. That might actually work. Ooh, I think negative 0.02 might be the perfect sweet spot here. I'm going to go ahead and move. Oh, you can see then that that's going to mess with our axis. So let's, let's just drag this down though so that all the labels are in the same. Look at how nice that is. But my my actual um, x-axis has changed here, so I want to get that back so that I can adjust it. So what you can actually do is over here in the plot area, go over here and then click on the, let's see if we can get that. Maybe it's over here in the format plot, no. What I usually do is highlight the chart, go up to the chart design tab, add chart elements, and then go to axis to get your axis back. And now you can see the axis is set to negative 20 by default up to 100. So let's go here and adjust that. And let's just say, 
let's put that back to zero. And of course, then my labels disappear because zero is there. So let's do 0.02, negative 0.02. There, that works much better. And you know, you don't need to see that axis. The proportions are still the same here in the chart, 94% down to 45%. All right, now that is a beautiful lollipop chart, another cool technique to sort of hack Excel into doing the things that we want. If you like this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up. Uh, thanks for going on the journey with me. I hope you had some laughs. Um, if you wouldn't mind, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to get as many subscribers as possible. You'll get notifications every time I upload a new video on Excel, PowerPoint, data visualization, or other design tips and tricks uh, that I learn along the way. You'll get notifications of that as soon as I post them. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.